How's it growing? This morning, we are at the Rotary Community Garden and Food Forest of Coral Springs, and we are gonna get a garden tour. My friend Judith Golko is a co-founder and organizer of the Rotary Community Garden and Food Forest of Coral Springs. This is a two-part series where in this one we have the garden tour, but in the next episode we're going to talk to some of the participants in this garden program and also the volunteers in the garden program and the food forest. So now let's meet Judith Golko. This is one of my favorite herbs. It's Mexican tarragon, yeah. Tajetis lucida. It's such a great herb makes such great tea, good medicinal. I'm Judy Galco, a co-founder of the Community Garden and a founder of this food forest. This is black turmeric and beside it is blue turmeric. So gorgeous. The root is the turmeric. In 2009, we co-founded the part within the fence, uh, the garden plots, and we built the areas around that. We have 54 boxes, they're four by eight and they are rented by the year. For the last several years, it's, it's nominal, it's $40 a year. It just helps us with materials. Our season runs from October 1st to October 1st. So yeah, there's 54 boxes typically rented by individuals or families, occasionally by a pair of friends. There are some simple rules. No trees in your box, for example, just annuals. Keep up with your box, ask for help if you need help and um, people are expected to put in at least 12 hours of help in the community garden at large. We have a, a mandala garden, a circular garden, which has flowers and turmeric, herbs, medicinals, and that's for anyone, in, any one of our gardeners to use, uh, to enjoy. We have row crops, which we grow up food to donate to food banks, food pantries and around the edges of the fence is dedicated to our pollinators. All pollinators, but we particularly, especially when they were in such trouble, we devoted to monarch butterflies. So around the, around the edge, especially in the front, we have plants for pollinators. And along the sides, we have herbs and trees like papayas and medicinals. And around the sides is also for the whole community to share. We have a shade house. Where, which was an Eagle Scout project. And in the shade house, we grow plants for like our upcoming plant sale, November 7th, or um, for plants to put in the food forest, mostly for the communal projects. Typically for individuals, they either seed them at their houses or they just plant seeds straight into their box or they buy plants and put them in their box. We are an organic garden. We're not worried about a certified label, but no, no chemical fertilizers or herbicides or pesticides and we help people, we teach people about integrated pest management, growing naturally, building soil, which is really the secret to everything. If you look at the garden beds, they almost all have flowers in them. Flowers like cosmos or marigolds, which attract beneficials and repel bugs we don't really want. We have a composting area, a banana circle in here as well. In 2014, there had been planted some fruit trees already out here and I asked the city to allow us to develop a community of plants around the fruit trees to develop a food forest out here which is growing plants like in a forest. So this is a good example of a polyculture which is a group of plants uh, growing and supporting each other together in a, in a forest. We have coffee, which is actually producing berries for the first time, very exciting. Coffee is a lower tree or shrub underneath Moringa, protected by Moringa. And beside Malanga, which is an edible root. So this, these are all growing together really nicely. It's a good example of a polyculture. Even more perfect would be if there was a ground cover like sweet potatoes growing around. These are perennials, meaning plants that grow for several years or many years and growing together in communities, just like in a forest where several species tend to grow together and support each other. I founded the Food Forest and a group of volunteers. We designed it and we started developing it. And here we are five years later, 
uh, continuing to develop it, but it's certainly more fleshed out than it was then. A food forest does many things at the same time. It obviously provides food for people and also for pollinators and other animals. This messy mound over here is a great example of what you design and what happens, what is divine design are often not the same thing. We uh, used our old, old rotted uh, boards from our garden beds from the first generation and we piled them up in a pile kind of like a hugel culture and we put soil on top and our idea was to have it be uh, a mound of sweet potato or yams so we planted some yams what ended up they never took and it ended up being a pile of weeds but at the same time we were having discussions in the gardens about should we have in the garden about should we have bees and the committee, we kept going back and forth. Some people felt like it wasn't safe to just have bees, just random bee boxes, it wasn't safe for the community. Others thought it was. In the meantime, while we were having all these discussions, wild bees moved into that mound. They, they were tired of waiting for us humans. And there they are in that messy place. Very, very happy wild bees. Um, every once in a while, I think I've seen it twice, they must be very healthy because you'll see a swarm in this tree for a few days uh, when they divide and take off. But they've been living there for years now. Uh, good thing they didn't listen to us. You create an environment that actually is regenerative. It creates a healthier ecosystem than when you started. We have so many more butterflies and several different kinds of bees, all kinds of pollinators. We have developed so much soil and so much healthy environment. While we are growing uh, all kinds of plants, for example, our fruit trees, which provide, of course, fruit, other trees, which provide edible leaves, herbs, medicinals, all kinds of food. It also provides community and builds community. Uh, volunteers and people who connect and people who connect to the land so often we find new volunteers or just members of the community who are walking by and they see a plant from their region and their faces just light up. One of the most prolific trees in our garden is the tamarind tree over here, just loaded with fruit almost all the time. And many people from the community come and collect the tamarinds. Our Indian gardeners love it. Apparently there's a chutney or a sauce they make out of it. They're delicious just from the pod, the, the sweet fruit inside. It's actually a little tart. And I believe Mexicans make tamarind balls with tamarind pulp and brown sugar. I've made that a, little, a couple of times from the fruit. It's so delicious. When they're ripe, they just fall to the ground. And if you get them before the animals or the bugs, you just pick them up. They're ready when you just press them gently and they break. Such a great tree, so prolific. The community loves it. We try to mimic nature. So we do focus on natives, but at a certain point, what is a native? How long has it been here? This quote unquote weed, this vine that grows everywhere, uh, Molothria pendula. See the little cucumber? Oh, yeah. It's a wild cucumber, tastes delicious, especially if you eat it when it's green and firm. If it's too soft, it can hurt your stomach. But uh, yeah, I snack on these. So that must be what, what Cynthia calls the cucamelon? Yeah, I think that's what she calls cucamelon, which I don't think it's, I think it's, well, it's Molothria pendula, but some people call it cucamelon. Now I grow something similar. I got the seeds from Baker Creek. It's called Mexican sour gherkin. Oh, and we also by, mimic nature by bringing plants here that are very well suited to this environment, whether it's from the islands or India, or Brazil or Africa, some from the Mediterranean, although that's a drier climate. Some of those plants are well suited here and we bring them here. Perpetual spinach is growing nicely and we're just going to keep building that up. We're going to put lots of perennial spinaches and herbs all over. We bring them here uh, to grow what grows well and naturally even if it's not actually a native of here. So we don't fight nature. We don't bring trees like apple trees, which simply this is not the climate for. Uh, we grow tropicals and things that are well suited here working with nature 
and we support them. And as they grow, they need less and less external help from us. This is a jujube tree. Let's see, it's flowering. It doesn't have very showy flowers. Oh, and tiny little jujubes are developing. Yay! In January, I'd say at the end of January, they'll be ready. And often on that particular work day, let's say beginning of February or mid-January, we harvest and we eat as a, as a community and it's just so nice. They taste like a brown sugar apple when they are very ripe and like a tart apple when they're, when they're not so ripe. Really delicious. We also weave in uh, various aspects of community. High schoolers get uh, volunteer service hours here. We have a landscaper who dumps mulch for us here. That's an example of a, um, a very adaptive relationship. So mulch is dumped here, which would otherwise go into the waste stream. The landscaper would have to pay to have mulch go in the waste stream and rot. And here we don't have to buy mulch. And for free, mulch is dumped that we use to, to build soil here. We estimate, uh, we don't know how many tons of soil we have built just by bringing mulch here. So that's an example of a relationship between people and plant material. And another way we've been adaptive, which has been sad and tragic and yet has turned it into meaning, was while we were in the middle of developing the food forest, tragically the Parkland shooting happened. And also tragically, one of the 17 killed was the daughter of one of our gardeners. And fairly soon it became, what emerged was the idea that as part of the food forest garden, a memorial was needed. So we began developing the Helena Ramsey Memorial Garden as part of the food forest. And that has been uh, so meaningful and such a, such a bomb to people in the community, such a salve. We have uh, 17, bamboo trees representing each of the ones murdered. They are Buddha belly bamboos. We have this monument, which actually Broward Monuments was kind enough to donate the stone to us. And this is uh, the labyrinth, the memorial labyrinth. There's a sign there explaining. Basically a labyrinth is a circuitous walking path. This particular design is a seven circuit Cretan labyrinth. Um, and walking the labyrinth is used as a meditation, a time to reflect, and walking a labyrinth represents the path of life. Unlike a maze where there are dead ends and you have to find one right way, a labyrinth is one continuous circuitous route. And we often find people walking the labyrinth, children love it, it's really wonderful. And we're slowly developing the um, we're developing the, the landscaping around it. Right now I'm looking and I'm seeing we need to weed. There's been a lot of rain, but that's how it goes. We developed, we designed and created this as a community, both gardeners who are part of the garden and people in the community in general, flowers and medicinals. Especially at the beginning of the pandemic when all the parks were closed, um, there's no gate here. There's there's nothing to close. Many people who were desperate to be outside found the garden, found the memorial. They were so impressed. They found so much peace here. Here's a place to sit. It's our wild area. When you design in permaculture, you always are incorporating your wild area. This was already here. In case people don't know, this is a very prolific vine. Ceracee. Ceracee. It's, uh, it is a medicinal, although it's very bitter. This is a popcorn cassia where the flowers actually smell like popcorn. Helena's family, even though she grew up here and uh, her parents grew up partly in England, 
Uh, their, their origins are from Jamaica, so we are also bringing, as part of the memorial, some plants from Jamaica, and it's been very meaningful to the community. Here is uh, an example of sweet potato as a ground cover, so it prevents, you know, other grasses. Eventually there should be some food. Here's lemongrass. Sevens in a food forest are the seven F's. Food, fiber, there are plants you can grow for fiber. One of these days when it, when it seems to work out, we'll grow hemp for fiber and that will be wonderful to learn how to use. Fertilizer, we have plants like Mexican sunflower, which we, we can grow and then chop and drop and put around other plants, so growing our own f fertilizer. Uh, F, playfully for pharmaceutical, meaning medicines. Fun, just plants that are beautiful and, and we enjoy. Fuel, there are plants that would produce oil, of course that's not easy. And fodder, which would be plants, that, if you had animals, that you could feed to the animals. The other thing about a food forest like this, it's not on private land, it's in a community, it's in a city, it also isn't fenced. So it's actually also an experiment in a commons. A commons meaning grounds that op is open to the public, that the public shares. So it's an interesting experiment. Um, interesting is sometimes code word, there's times where it's aggravating. Uh, we have occasionally, thankfully not too often, we've had occasional thefts. I had um, a Fairchild mango ripped out of the ground once, a week after I planted it. And we get all these delicious mulberries. I love mulberries. We've definitely had thefts. We have thefts of fruit. So that's one way to think about it is thefts, which we define as people who haven't asked permission and aren't volunteers and aren't invested in it, taking. Yet it is also for the public, so it's, it's unclear. But until we have a ton of fruit, we don't prefer that. Um, however, we've had so many more gifts of labor, of people's energy, people's excitements, donations. We've had donations people have asked what they could bring. They've been very excited. We have, there's a lot of people from the islands, maybe they're in an apartment, but they, they can't help themselves. They still have to grow. They save their seeds, they grow them, and then they come and they say, oh, can I give this to you to plant here? That would make me so happy. So we get so many donations. Sometimes I'll even come here and there's plants sitting here. People have just come and dropped them off. These two pots were not here a few days ago. Someone came and donated those plants. I'm actually not quite sure what they are. We can't plant everything that people bring us, especially if it's really not, you know, a medicinal or a flower for pollinators, or if it's an invasive, but we often do. So part of the design is what spontaneously the community brings, which is, I think is very cool. Yeah, those just showed up. So I'd say overall, we have gotten more than has been taken from us. So it is an interesting experiment in the commons. And also, um, it helps us look at things a certain way. We can help teach others to respect this place and we can try to have abundance. Bananas really like to grow in a clump with their friends rather than individually. And they, they like to grow in a circle. They are heavy feeders and they like a lot of water. So we've put them in the garden at the lowest place. They like wet feet. We just harvested a big bunch for the community. I see, I think, three bunches growing. If you have the space, this is a great way to grow bananas. Uh, we have a jackfruit there and um, it hasn't produced for a couple of years, but when it was producing, our jackfruits were stolen and some gardeners were naturally very upset and one gardener said, well, we have to put a fence around the food forest. And I said, or we need to plant more jackfruits. So we're trying to have that kind of perspective. Later, I asked Judy, if you had one main takeaway from this video that you want viewers to have, what would that takeaway be? And I loved her answer. But before I get to that, I want to share my quick closing thought. And that is, I hope this video gave you insight and inspiration that makes you consider 
doing something like this in your own city. Start working with the city. Maybe start small on a small scale and work your way to something bigger. Now, what was her takeaway answer? She referred me to the mission statement of this garden community food forest program that she has. And that is to promote a healthy ecosystem of soil, plants, and community, provide food and beauty, promote community involvement, demonstrate the diversity of useful, attractive plants possible to grow sustainably in South Florida, and create a space in which the community can get connected to where food comes from and to each other, learn, gather, fulfill service requirements, eat, and enjoy. I want to give a big thank you to Judy for taking the time for giving us this tour. And I think it's awesome that Coral Springs worked with them to let them develop this program. I would like to see more CDs do that. Next episode, we're going to talk to these participants in the garden program and volunteers. And Cynthia Schaefer in the same episode Garrett. is taking us to Davie and we're going to talk to some of the participants in the, the garden program there. If you got something out of this video, please do me a huge favor. Like the video, subscribe to my channel, click on that bell so that you'll be notified when I upload videos in the future. And let's grow together. Mm -hmm.